What's going on, everybody? My name is Stephen Coons, and I am the host of the Everyday Pursuit. What's up? This is a health and fitness and nutrition and mindset podcast, if you don't know. And just to tell you a little bit about who we are, uh, in case you haven't listened, we are um, a health and fitness coaching company. We train men and women all over America. We primarily train veterans, first responders, and medical professionals just because we've found a system that really works for these people. They're busy, maybe their shifts are long or they change. Um, and I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, the that whole like first responder and medical community and even the military is is really struggling being healthy. Like I can't tell you how many people that I know um, that are out of shape or know of out of shape cops, like the whole fat cop thing's a joke, but uh, that's a serious thing. Like this person's supposed to not only protect somebody's life, but their own, right? Or a firefighter, like, you know, those people need to be in good shape. Or I know you might seem like, oh, maybe a nurse doesn't. My wife's a nurse. She's had to like pick up bigger people. And so if she's not doing strength training and she throws out her back, okay, well now how she's supposed to take care of the kids at home and, you know, do her life. Like, you know, it, it's not just a obesity ep epidemic. Um, my mom's been an MA for 20 something years. She's a little overweight, unfortunately. And I've been around that medical field. And I can't tell you how many girls I know that just sit in the office all day long and they just gain like 10, 20 pounds a year because they just sit and they sit. And then they're so mentally tired when they get home, they sit. Um, and so that's why I want to really help those people out. I understand that, that there's a huge problem, but there's a solution. And we know because we're training hundreds of people right now that are losing fat, building muscle, you know, having better performance, all while working those jobs, full-time cops, firefighters, nurses, doctors. Um, so it's 100% possible with that lifestyle. In fact, I would argue that like having a lifestyle, like, you know, maybe working a couple 12-hour shifts if you're a shift worker is actually easier in a way. Now, if you work eight hours a day, yeah, you can go to the gym more days per week, but a lot of our clients only go like three or four days. So uh, yeah, you don't need as much as you think. I have a nursing client that's like, hey, I only wanna go on my days off. Cool, this is what you're gonna do, how long you wanna spend in the gym. But anyways, that's that's enough about us. You can go visit us too. Um, you can go like check out our programs a little bit more and just read about us. You can go to pursuehp.com or on Instagram, it's at pursue underscore HP. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to dive in. You know, I, I got this question the other day, which is basically like, it was a young kid, 19 years old on Instagram, swimmer asking me, oh, how, you know, how many days do I need, you know, how many days do I need to work out to build muscle? Well, first of all, uh, the real answer, and uh, if Coach Mike was on here, he'd tell you, it depends. Like, that's a very broad question. Like, how long have you been training? What are you doing in the gym? How much volume? What does your nutrition look like? But let's just say, I don't want this, this to be a shorter episode. So let's just say your recovery was on point, your nutrition was on point, um, everything, like your training was where it needs to be, right volume, right load, right progressions. Um, I would say most people to build a, subs like the thing about building muscle, before I give you the answer, the thing about building muscle is there's only like three things that need to happen, okay? And because there's only three things, you there's not a lot of variables. So you can kind of like basically do what you want to make it fit. So the three things you need to do, number one is you need to tear down the muscle, right? You need to create micro tears to where it sends signals to your body saying, this is damage, we need to repair it. Then you need to go and you need to eat the nu adequate nutrition. So basically like protein, carbs, and water, right? And you should have some fats too, but like that's basically what you need. And then recovery mostly happens while you're sleeping. That's it. Those are the three things. It's not magic. You need to tear the muscle down enough, put enough stress on it to where you're causing micro tears. Then you need to, and I'm not talking about strength. I'm just talking about muscle size, right? Hypertrophy, AKA muscle growth. Then you need to have the fuel in your body. So when you sleep, your body can use all the materials and go to work. That's it, okay? So this could be accomplished in one day per week. Now, is that optimal? No, this could be accomplished in two days a week. Is that optimal? Probably not for most people. Um, 
And is, you know, could you do it three, four, five, six, seven days a week? Sure. Here's why the opposite end of the spectrum, like I think one day per week and seven days per week um, is not super beneficial. And this is just a general statement because there are so many different ways to work out. And are they doing bar? Are they doing yoga? Are they whatever? Let's just say strength training, okay? Because that's what you need to be doing. Um, and sorry, I should have added, I guess there's kind of a fourth thing. If you want to continue to build muscle, you need progressive overload. Uh, but that is a precursor to tearing down the muscle. If you're not progressively overloading the muscle, it's going to adapt and then you can lift and you could get better endurance. You could even get stronger because strength comes from the brain. It's neurological and you know your nervous system, but it doesn't mean you're actually gonna gain more muscle. The thing about gaining muscle is everybody's a little bit different and there is a sweet spot. Now, one thing that I've struggled with in my life is gaining muscle, but not gaining fat, which is what everybody wants to do. The problem is you have to understand that there's a couple different ways to gain muscle. And the guys that come to me and say they want to gain muscle are the guys that have been skinny their whole life. They try to eat whatever, fast food, 4,000, 5,000 calories a day. They can't do it. They feel sick to their stomach because they're shoving food in their mouth and they just want to build muscle. Now, some other people, maybe not, but that's like the, you know, the ideal clientele that's like, dude, my only goal is to build muscle. If for most of those people, I actually tell them to lift like probably three to four days a week. Uh, I think four would be optimal. And here's the thing, whether you're bulking or you're cutting or you're doing a body recomp or you're in a maintenance phase, I don't think your training should train or should change that much. Like I, I don't, I think it should almost be exactly the same and you should just have to tweak your nutrition. Um, and here's why. If your goal, like just a lot of our clients, is to burn fat and build muscle, you should be lifting within the hypertrophy range for like the vast majority of your workouts. It just makes the most sense, right? Which is like three to five sets, you know, eight to 12 reps. Like that's very general, but that's kind of where it lies in. If you're doing that and you're progressively overloading, you're not going to have any problem. Here's where it becomes an issue working out not enough hypertrophy really it comes off of like muscle stimulation right so you can either lift a you basically have to lift a total amount of volume and volume is like sets and reps and weight so if i lift 10 pounds 10 times i lifted 100 pounds so if you look at total volume you could break that up right you could say i'm going to do five sets of five pounds on monday for my squats right and then on Tuesday, or sorry, Thursday, I'm going to do five pounds of five sets. And that's the same thing. That's 10 by 10, right? If you add both of those up. And the problem is like some people and coaches will say, oh, well, that's the same. It's the same amount of volume, but it's not the same because your body also had three days to recover. And that might not, it's not that it wouldn't be the same, but that's, that might not be enough progressive overload. Uh, another precursor to like muscle growth, right? And tearing them down a lot of times as taking uh, muscles to failure or very close to failure. If you don't do that, it's not going to probably elicit muscle growth. So for example, the whole theory behind, oh, well, if you could just basically do like half your workout on Monday, 45 minutes and 45 minutes on Thursday, and it's the same thing as an hour and a half workout. No, it's not. It's not because your body had all that time to recover. Now it's not a bad thing, doesn't mean you cannot reach muscle failure within 45 minutes because you absolutely can. But let's just say within this 45 minutes, you just got like squats and lunges and it was like a five out of 10. That's not the same thing as a nine out of 10 workout. Like it's not, especially the longer you've been training, you need to get closer to muscle failure and hit more volume in workouts and have, and then you need to have basically the most rest in between. And that's why the other end of the spectrum where people are working out six or seven days a week I mean, if you're a bodybuilder, like legitimately want to compete and go on stage, that might be a good idea, but they have days. Like I had this friend that was training for bodybuilding and he had a day where it was literally like forearms, um, and like ankles and wrists, like really weird. Right. Because seven days, like, you know, he's like, oh, I already hit my glutes and my hamstrings. I already hit my quads and my calves. I already hit my back and biceps, chest and triceps, shoulders and abs. And I have two more days. What am I doing on those two days? Cause he wants to train every day. So he has to do like very auxiliary type stuff, not necessarily great for muscle building. Um, 
And so, so basically like you don't want to probably be on both ends of the spectrum. I could tell you personally, when I had the most muscle growth I've ever had and looked the thickest and I look good, I was like decently lean is when I trained my muscle groups like a bodybuilder, when I did one day per week, like one day per week, one muscle group, uh, specifically like my legs grew a lot. I do them every Monday. And I'm not saying this is the best thing for you, but I do them every Monday uh, for like 90 minutes straight, sometimes a little bit longer. So it was probably unnecessarily a lot of volume. Um, and some people might go, oh, that's too much. You're going to get injured. Well, it might be too much for you. But for me at that time, it was not too much. My legs were pretty shot, but I also had six days to totally recover them, like 100% repair. So when I went back, they were really fresh. I was really strong. If I were to do that over again, I would do what I've been doing. And this was like back in 2016. So I would have been doing what I do now, which is basically breaking up my legs between two different days. Um, I have one day where I do like posterior chain. It's a lot of lower back and hamstrings, um, you know, low back glutes. And then another day where I just basically do like quad stuff and knee stuff. The reason I do that too is because I, my workouts are a little bit shorter too, they're like an hour. I can get to muscle failure. I can get to beating them up. Now the exercise selection is where it becomes like, really, you gotta be really picky. Cause if I go in and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do quads. I'm only doing it one day a week. Remember, I'm just separating. I'm still doing it one day a week, but I'm throwing some stuff in. And basically I hit Monday, Thursday. Part of the reason I do that is I want the most recovery in between. Um, I don't need six or seven days, but I want like, you know, 72 hours. So Mondays and Thursdays, I've hit legs. When I on Monday, when I do quads, I do a little bit of glute stuff, some auxiliary. And then on Thursday, when I do posterior chain, I do a little bit of quad stuff, auxiliary, but it's mostly that. So I actually am hitting my legs twice a week, um, both the quads and the posterior chain, glutes, hamstrings, all that stuff. But it's, I, I have a main focus. And here's why I think that that is actually a better way than hitting it all in one day. When I used to do it in one day, back in 2016, just one day of just brutalizing my body parts, it is good for muscle growth. But what what's also really good for is injuries. That's my experience. Every time I did like super, super high volume, it's just like a lot of stress on the joint. And back then I, di I didn't have as much variation as I do in my exercises now. And, uh, and, and yeah, I just, I, I feel like I was getting little stupid injuries too, like rotator cuff or, Ooh, my knee, or I tore my labrum actually back then benching. And the thing too, is it was just like so much stress and everybody's training is a little bit different, but it was so much stress on like my shoulder when I tore it that I do like flat bench, then incline bench, then decline, then flies, then pushups. Then, you know, it was like so much and I wasn't working like my internal external rotation and I was probably pretty tight. So I don't like to push myself to a certain level anymore. I actually realized that I can get almost the same amount of growth by splitting it up. And I know I kind of said, oh, well, yeah, maybe you shouldn't do that in the first place. It depends. Like, yeah, if it was five sets of five and you did it, you know, five, five sets of five pounds, Mondays and Thursdays, that's nothing. Right. Like, let's, I know it's a totally unrealistic weight, but let's say it was, you know, five sets of 135 pounds. That is not the same thing as doing 10 sets of 135 pounds in the same day. Like, it's not. In fact, five sets of 135 pounds, my muscles might go, eh, didn't really tear them down, fatigue them. Sure. Could I get better muscle endurance? Sure. Could I get stronger? I could. But, I, but my muscles aren't going to tear down, right? That's inefficient. Your muscles don't really want to tear down because then you need extra fuel, right? Food and calories and that, that might not be there. So your body is actually meant to be like really, really efficient and not break muscle down. So it's a very much a forced thing. That's why when you're going in the gym, you're doing what I call inefficient movements purposefully. Like when you do a bicep curl, a preacher curl, you're putting your elbow here and you're isolating the joint, which is a very inefficient way to get the, the weight from here to here, right? From down to up. However, we do it purposefully. We create an inefficiency to tear down the muscle. Okay. And the reason that that's important is you got to look at what movements 
are causing a lot of tension on the muscle because that's what actually will cause the tears and the time it's under tension. And you can get a lot of different benefits. You can get stronger, you can get better endurance, and you can build muscle kind of all in the same time. Maybe not like great endurance, but better than what you have, absolutely. And that's kind of why I think that I like, I know I'm jumping around a little bit here, but that's why I like hypertrophy training personally. It doesn't mean I never do strength training, but it kind of hits everything. Like I'm really in the middle and I train a lot of men that go, well, I don't want to be big. I don't want to be like skinny. I kind of want to be like athletic looking and in the middle. Doesn't mean you're training like a bodybuilder. I kind of do like functional bodybuilding, um, which is basically hypertrophy training with some like functional, functional quotes, air quotes, <laughs> training where I'm doing like a little rower or a salt bike or, you know, body weight exercises. So I kind of have the best of both worlds. Uh, but as far as gaining muscle, I mean, three to four days a week is, is plenty. Um, I really like the four day split. This is my favorite four day split. I'll do quads and calves, uh, chest and triceps, back and biceps and, uh, or sorry, uh, quads and calves. Then I do basically like an upper. So it is like a push pull, like a chest, triceps, back biceps. Okay. That's day two. Day three, I do shoulders and abs and day four, I do posterior chain, which is basically glutes, hamstrings and lower back and upper back. The reason I break it up like that too, and have like one day where I do aux, auxiliary and core, uh, for muscle building is that day is more, I mean, yeah, I want to work my core, but it's more like hitting the weaknesses, right? Cause I'm actually only lifting three days a week. Now my sessions are pretty long and they have a lot of volume and they're pretty brutal, but it also means that I have a lot of days of recovery, a lot, right? I have basically three days of recovery. And even during my auxiliary and, um, and core day, I'm not breaking down my muscles a lot. I mean, I'm doing a little bit of cardio. I'm doing some like clamshells, some adductor stuff, uh, maybe some internal external rotation on my shoulders. So it's really like prehab stuff, right? Which is basically the exercises you do to prevent injuries. And when I'm lifting heavy weight and I'm lifting high volume, I might notice, oh, I'm shifting a little more to this side or, oh, this knee hurts a little bit more. So during that auxiliary day, I kind of hit those weak points. And this is, I think, what's really important about having a day like that. If you can have a day where you hit some auxiliary, you actually are more likely to not get injured. And if you're not injured, it means you can continue to lift high volume and heavy. And that is where a lot of the muscles build. It's just, you got to just do it longer. It's not necessarily harder. You just got to do it longer uh, because building muscle takes a while. Like it really, really does. You have to like train, tear it down, you know, eat the protein, the calories, drink, sleep over and over and over and over and over and over. So if you're on it for two months and then you're like, oh, I got hurt. Oh, I had to take two months off. I'm on it for four months. Oh, I got hurt. I got to take a month and a half off. Like, what if you just never got injured? How much stronger would you be? And Coach Mike, we know I had him on a podcast a long time ago, and he's like, I haven't been injured in like, I can't even remember the last time. So because he he does a conjugate style training where he basically has a lot of movements where he's working on his weakness. So that is something that you maybe weren't expecting, but I think having one of those days is really important to build strength and muscle. Um, I will say though, that like most people tend to build the most muscle training, like around four to five days a week. I've been at the time I've been at like points in my life where I've built actually a substantial amount of muscle training six days per week. Um, but some of that was a little bit cardio. I've even been at the point where I was training seven days a week. Uh, I would take a rest day like once or twice a month but I wasn't going in and crushing it every day. I would literally do like 45-ish minute workouts. Um, I would really focus on breaking down one muscle group specifically, and I'd only do one exercise, maybe two exercises or a variation of it. And so it wasn't a lot. Some people will hear you like say, oh, I've trained seven days a week. And immediately they'll be like, oh, that's overtraining. <laughs> well, it, it's so dependent on how long you've been training, what you're doing in the gym, uh, what's the volume? What's the exercise selection? Because if I went and I just said, hey, I'm going to do squat, you know, I'm going to do squats, pull ups, bench press, deadlift, you know, rows, and something else. And those are like the seven days a week, right? Most people would be like, oh, that's not bad. You're just doing one exercise. Yeah. But what if I'm doing like 10 sets? Do you think that's overtraining? 
could be, depends on the individual. Is that a great way to build muscle? I mean, I don't think it's a bad way. Uh, and I, and, and there's so many different ways to train, like how we do it with our clients. I'm like, okay, when you do your orientation call, how many days a week do you want to train? Now, this is where it's going to be dependent. They go, well, uh, probably four to five. That's very common, right? I'm like, okay, that's really good start. Like five's a lot. Four is really good too. So let's go to the gym four days a week. Um, if we go four days a week, how long do you want to go to the gym? You need to understand that. Well, some people say I only have 45 minutes or they only want to dedicate 45 minutes. Cool. So your workouts are going to look a lot different. If somebody goes, oh, like an hour to an hour and a half, which is kind of usually what I do in the gym. It's like, okay, so your workouts are going to look probably more like mine. Like we can hit, you know, two main compound movements, a couple auxiliary movements. You are going to probably do some type of like a muscle building split. Uh, you can do full body as well, but I don't know if like the person has been training a long time or not. So they tell me, but if they've been training a long time, maybe they need more volume on one muscle to stimulate growth, which is where I am. I've had other coaches tell me, well, Stefan, well, why don't you just, you know, for me, why don't you just do a full body four days a week? Because if you're hitting a chest four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever, you're hitting it four times a week and that's more volume. And I try to explain to them like, Sure. If I went to failure on one exercise, maybe, but for my body, it's just not, it's just not enough. Like it, it's not like I can sit there and do five sets of 10 and go to failure or, you know, six sets. And I'm not saying my chest won't get sore, but I don't feel strong. And I don't think I can lift as much weight, which means I don't tear down my muscles as much. And if I'm hitting chest four days a week, I am risking like beating up the joint a little bit more, maybe causing some injury. Um, and so it's not terrible. I just choose not to do that. So to wrap it up, I think if you're lifting like four ish days a week to five days a week is probably optimal. Um, I highly suggest, and this is very dependent on how long you've been training, but I highly suggest you doing like lifting probably more like a bodybuilder, like just focusing on a couple muscle groups, one or two muscle groups. Um, but it doesn't mean neglect everything else. You should still be hitting your auxiliary stuff. You should still be working on flexibility, mobility, and cardio. And remember, you have three other days. Now, I know you might, well, I said I only wanted to train four days a week. Okay, well, I'm talking about intentionally going to the gym. Like, there's no reason. I'm, I'm, this is me. You might hate me for this. There's no reason that you can't sit there and watch Netflix and do a little bit of stretching routine. Or there's no reason that you can't do 25 minutes of cardio and I'm not saying train seven days a week, but like, I know people that are in really good shape and they work out every day and they're big dudes. Now, when I say work out, it doesn't mean lifting weights. Sometimes they're just walking on a treadmill. Sometimes they're just doing just mobility work. They don't even break a sweat, but they realize that like, it's not just about doing your really heavy, big lifting the four days a week. And then everything takes care of itself. Sure. To a certain extent, but you're going to hit a place where you're like, oh, this got hurt or this isn't working right. And so you have to add in those like other auxiliary days too. So that's why to conclude, I think actually telling yourself, allowing yourself to have more training days is more beneficial. Um, another thing about gaining muscle too, is you're probably going to get bigger, right? That's the whole point. And when you get bigger, you get tighter. And I know in the air force, I was quite a bit more muscly up top than I am now. Um, like I, I, I felt a lot different, but my shoulders were tight. I always had rotator cuff issues. I had some pec issues and some back issues because I just went and I was like, okay, so, and this is when I very first learned about fitness. I'm like, okay, so squat, bench, deadlift, you know, lifting like a bodybuilder, all this hypertrophy stuff. And I did it and it worked, but it also led to me getting injured, which means I had to take time off. I took two years off of doing any bench press or shoulder stuff because I had a torn labrum, which is a very terrible thing to recover because it's cartilage and it basically gets no blood flow. So that was stupid. Why did I do that? Because I had no volume regulation. I didn't work on my auxiliary stuff. And so if I actually wanted to get bigger, what I could have done is backed off on the volume a little bit, taking care of that stuff. And sure, I maybe wouldn't have had as many gains like in the same time frame, but I would have not had to take two years off. And long term, I actually probably would have been a lot bigger and had a lot more muscle. Um, so it is hard for me to make this episode and be like, do this, uh, because it is so individualized. It is so specific. 
So I will say if you guys have any specific questions about what you should be doing, I, I would just talk to somebody that's educated. Please don't go scour the internet for like all these articles. I mean, do your own research. I'm not telling you to just cry out for help immediately, but there's a lot of contradictory, contradictory information. And we want to make sure, like, I want to make sure that you're not being led down a rabbit hole like I was or um, told the wrong information. I will say though, that there's not, if you can't tell, that's really hard for me to just like make a statement. And this is why there's not really a wrong and a right way. That's the truth. There's not really a wrong and a right way to train. Like there's a lot of experimentation, right? So I got my degree in exercise science. What's a scientist? Like when you think of scientists, you think of experiments, right? They experiment, they test theories. So a lot of people don't understand that about working out as they go, this is the way. And I go, well, let's see. Let's see. You're the subject. Let's test you. Let's see what works for you. So now it's where you start off and you go, I could do that on my own. Why do I need a coach? Why do I need help? Well, it's where you start off. And, and then when you get the data back and something's not working, do you actually know what to do? And as an exercise scientist, I know what to do. If I say, hey, I'm going to put you on, uh, you know, based on your like, level of experience in your training split, I want to put you on four day a week full body because if you can only go to the gym for 45 minutes, let's just do like one, you know, you're going to do four exercises, one of each muscle group, and we do that four days a week. Let's do that. Let's see if that works for you. Then the client comes back and they go, yeah, this was a seven out of 10. This was like the right level of difficulty. I spent the right amount of time in the gym because that's super, super important because they have to stay consistent. So it has to fit their schedule and their lifestyle. Then it's, hey, go get your body scan. Let me see your progress photos. Is it working to gain muscle? They're like, yes, this program's great. That feedback doesn't mean that if I were to put them on a four day a week bodybuilding split, that they wouldn't get results. They could get the same results. So there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. And that's something that I think exercise science and nutrition, uh, you know, nutrition is a little more picky, but exercise science has become like so dogmatic, like you have to do this. Yeah, there's some black and white, there's some facts for sure, but like you can kind of do what you want. So a coach should really help you come up with a program where you emotionally feel like, and mentally like this works for me, whatever that is. And if you're getting results, cause you wouldn't say it works for you if you're not getting physical results, do that, right? And I can't tell you how many times I've personally switched between four days a week, five days a week, six days a week, four days a week, plus two cardio days, blah, 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 blah. And guess what? My physique for the most part has just gradually got a little bit better. And, it, and you're like, well, how is it getting better if you're switching it up all the time? I'm not switching it up because I, my body needs that. I'm switching it up because I get bored. So you want to talk about lifestyle? I'm like, oh, I want to do this. I want to try this. Like Coach Mike is writing me a conjugate program. Why am I doing that? Do I need that to build muscle? No, I could go destroy myself in my garage gym doing hypertrophy and look really good, but I don't want to do that. I did that for so long. I want to do something different. Maybe next year I'll go to hypertrophy training, like mostly. And so I know though that all I need to do if I want to gain muscle, which right now I'm in a cut, I was in a bulk, is I could still do conjugate training. I could still do hypertrophy. I could still do full body. I could still do whatever. I just need to break down my muscle, which I'm... I'm experienced, so I know what that is. I know what that failure point is for me. But I, even for myself, I need to experiment. When I first get on a program, for me, I program myself or Coach Mike, I give the first week and I will let my body or him or whoever's my coach know, hey, wow, like this was a really good, I definitely feel like it's working. Now I might not notice physical results in one week, but like, hey, let's run this for a month. If I liked it, if it worked for me, if it was fun, if I looked forward to going to the gym and it gave me physical results, let's just keep doing this. And then all it is in phase two and three and four, and as the months go on is like little tweaks. Maybe after four months, I'm like, you know what? I did gain some muscle, but I want to go back to this. So you can kind of like flip flop between programs too. I wouldn't suggest it at first, but I've done a lot of things to like build muscle. I've done five by fives. I've done German volume training. I mean. I, I can't tell you how many different things I've done. Right now, I'm really enjoying conjugate training because if you don't know what it is, message me on Instagram. I can tell you. I'm not going to even get into it, but um, it's just a lot of variety and it makes me feel very athletic and me being an ex-athlete, I don't just want to be big. Like I don't. I don't want to just be big. I want to be big and strong and functional and feel like a warrior 
And I know that when I used to do fitness modeling way back in like 2016 and a couple years after that, I looked good, but I didn't feel, I honestly didn't feel as athletic as I should have, especially right when I got out of the Air Force back in 2016, when I was like the biggest, I didn't feel athletic. I looked good. And maybe to you that like, doesn't matter at all. Um, but that's what I'm saying. You, you gotta just experiment. Maybe that's not the answer you're looking for, but you have to just kind of try some things. Now that doesn't mean go to the gym and do random shit. Please don't do that. Don't just go do random, uh, workouts on the app. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, try a structured program that's built around you, like where you are physically, your schedule, all that. Then once you try that, you get to see as you being the science experiment, what works for me? Yes or no? Okay. No. Why? What didn't work? Oh, the workouts were too long. Okay. Uh, this hurt my knee. Okay. And then you make little tweaks and you make little tweaks until it's perfect. Just like a scientist. Why wasn't the compound the correct compound? Oh, we put too much of this in. Okay. So let's do another beaker. Let's put a little bit of it in. Did that work? No, that was too little. Okay. A little more. And eventually after five, six, seven, a hundred experiments, the scientist has the perfect compound or solution. That's literally how you should be when you're looking at even cutting or gaining muscle. Dude, you know, unless you're 90 years old, you probably have some life in you. And so don't think like, oh, I'm going to waste my time. If you're in your 20s, 30s, or even 40s, you have so much time. Like you have 20, 30 plus years of still exercising every single day, basically, and going to the gym. A, a year of experimentation, good experimentation will set you up for success for the rest of your life. That's what we do with our clients. It's not just, when I say experimenting, it's not random. It's calculated. But it's like, let's see what works for you. And then the cool thing is after the year or longer, they're like, hey, I know how to be my own scientist. I know how to experiment. I know what works for me. Um, I built muscle like this before. So sweet, right? Like that's that would be my recommendation for you. Um, it is hard for me to sit here and be like, oh, some coaches will be like, yeah, four days a week, eight by, you know, four sets of 12. I approach you, you do this, do this, do this. If you really want to build muscle. Um, yeah, I understand that's maybe what you guys are looking for. And I do have like free guides, by the way, and exercise guides to help you uh, if you want them, hit me up. So it's not that we don't have the resources, but I don't want to get on here and just be like, do this because you'll go do that. And then you'd be like, wow, this doesn't work for me or I got hurt or whatever. It really is based on like what you like. Last example, I had this female client. She's in her late sixties, actually early seventies, very good shape for her age. And she started doing more like hypertrophy stuff and liked it. And then now she's like, Hey, it's too much on my body even though she was getting really good physical results. So now I said, well, what if we did the full body workouts, like three to four days a week, four days a week being optional. She still wants to burn fat and build muscle. So she's like, sure. She tried it. I explained to her like, Hey, just because these are full bodies doesn't mean you just lightly go on this one and lightly go on this one. Like we have to push it on this one exercise. Cool. And she understands that. And she's still getting the same results, but in her head, she goes, well, yeah, I like this way better. It, it's like, it feels like it's less harmful on my joints. I can emotionally buy into it. Like I, I like these better. They're a little bit quicker and guess what? The results aren't going to be that much different. So that's where the experiment comes back. It's a lot of like what we do with our clients is so much back and forth feedback. Like, Hey, is this good? Do you like that? How's the nutrition work for you? Blah, blah, blah. And we're basically like the scientist and they're the beaker, right? Like I'm, we're helping each other do the experiment. So hopefully this was helpful. I'm sorry if it was a little rambly, uh, I do these unscripted. So I'm literally just thinking in my head as I'm talking to you guys, like what to say. Um, and you know, I, I don't want it to be super confusing. So if, if you're like, okay, I, I kind of get what this guy's saying. You can do a lot of different options. You can kind of figure out what works for you. You really only need three main things to build muscle. Like what should I do? If you're at that point, like, but, but what do I do? Literally go book up a call, go to pursuehp.com. There's a, a button that says book a free call with the coach. You will get on with me and I can give you some insight into like what you should be doing. My guess is that you need to probably get on a program that is customized to you, especially in the beginning. Um, that's highly what we recommend for a lot of people. But even if you just have some questions, uh, you can hit me up on social media and I'll see if I can help you and at least guide you in a direction. But obviously I need some backstory, right? Of like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. And this is what I've you know, this is where I am and this is what I want. 
you can't just follow, like go to a random program. Cause the thing about the programs too, that you go buy that are like $10, $20, they say, this is for anybody who wants to build muscle. I'm sure they could, like I said, exercise science, like in a way can be very, very simple. It does not have to be complicated. Uh, and so that can have you build muscle, but is it going to work for all those other things? Can you stick to it? Can you stay consistent? Can you avoid injuries? Can you work on your weaknesses? A lot of programs don't like actually address those other things. They just address one thing. So it's not a bad place to start, but it's definitely not going to get you to build the amount of muscle probably, or get in the shape that you want to get in. So really appreciate it guys. If you have any questions, hit me up and we'll talk to you next time.